Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the human being one of the most sophisticated of his creation. But at the essence of the human being, he has put a heart, a place where love grows, a place where all emotion resides in there. We get angry with the heart, we get sad with the heart, we become happy with the heart. The heart is really the, the hub of the human being. And the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that if the heart is sound, then the entire body is sound, is true. And spiritual aspect, if you look at it from a physical aspect, the heart pumps blood to all of the organs in your body. So it is the stopping of the blood that human being, the circulation that human being leaves this world. The death of the heart. But the heart needs to be not only physically kept healthy, but also spiritually. And one of the nature of the dunya is that it try to agitate your heart. This is the nature of the world. Try to get you, everybody has a button, and the dunya knows how to push your button to get you angry, to get you distracted and not focus. There's a reason why we are here. Allah has put us down in this, on this planet Earth. There's a reason. And we have to figure out what is that reason? Why, why are we here? This is the great question, right? It's one of the greatest questions you can ask. It's at the center of Rumi's message as Kujo Omadam, Omadanam Bahre Chibut, but Kujo Miravam, Ochernanumoi Watanam. Where did I come from? And what was the purpose of my coming here? And where then am I going? Will you show me my final destination? Where am I going? Quran asks, Fa'ina Tathabun. Where then do you think you're going? It's a Quranic question. So the heart plays an important role in this journey. But the heart gets sick spiritually as well. The heart gets depressed. The heart gets sad. This is a time many of our hearts are wounded. This is a time many of our hearts are wounded right now. It's in pain. It's suffering because of our brothers and sisters, not only in Palestine, in Afghanistan with the earthquake. Over 2,000 people lost their lives, children mostly and women, right? All over the world, Kashmir is still the same. The Uyghurs in China is still the same. All of the problems of the world, the heart aches. So one of the scholars when Abu Bakr al-Razi went to one of the great sheikh and masters of his time, uh, Abu Ishaq, Ibrahim ibn Ahmed al-Khawas. He was one of the great Gnostics. And he asked them, he said, how do we heal the heart? Is it a medicine for the heart? Is there an ointment of healing for the heart? Because, you know, when you get a cut, you put new sperm and it heals it faster. He said, yes, there is what they call the dawai din. They call the, the medicine of the heart. He said, the first thing in the medicine of the heart is reading Quran with reflection." Reading Quran with reflections. One of the things about Quran, there are many things, but think about a few things. The first thing, it humbles you. That's the first thing. It puts you in your place. You open the Quran, you read Al-Fatiha, and you want to start. What is the first word? Alif, Lam, Mim. What does that mean? I don't know. Only Allah knows. So go with the Quran in humility. The first thing it does, you don't know. You don't know. They ask you, this is to the, they ask you a prophet of Allah. The, the, Allah is talking to his prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa They ask you about the ruh. Qulil ruhum in amri rabbi. Say the ruh, only Allah knows. I don't know, Allah knows. Wa ma utitum min al-ilmi illa qalila. Allah has given only a little bit of knowledge to us. We only have a little bit of knowledge. So the first thing, it humbles us when we go to, towards the Quran. The second thing, in the first ayah of Al-Baqarah, ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدن للمتقين This is a book of guidance. I'm going to give you guidance. Guidance for your life. Guidance for your death. Guidance when you're here in the world. Guidance in the grave. Guidance in the... All of it in the Quran. Guidance in your family life. In your business life. Do you want to be successful in the dunya? I'll show you how to do it. Do you want to know 
There's nothing that is left in the Quran. Allah did not leave anything. Everything is there. There's a beautiful story of Sayyidina Umar when a man, a non-Muslim, went to him and he said, oh, you say that everything is in the Quran? He said, of course, everything is in the Quran. He said, okay, how do you, how do you make tharid? How do you make this food? It's like a dish the Arab used to make. Is that in the Quran? The Quran teaches you that? He said, yes, it does. He said, how? He said, come. So he took him to his house, called his wife. He said, hey, honey, how do you make tharid? And she said, oh, this is how you make it. This is the ingredient. This is how you cook it. And the man said, no, 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 no. I didn't say, you said the Quran, you're asking your wife. He said, the Quran says, Fas ilu ahli dhikri in kuntum la ta'lamun. Ask the people who know if you don't know. I don't know that, but my wife knows, so I ask her, and there's your answer. And that's how the man became Muslim. He goes, really, truly, everything is in the Quran. So we have the Quran, but we have to reflect upon the teachings of the Quran. At the center of the stories of the Quran is the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. And then the story of Musa and Pharaoh. If you look at these two stories, Allah is teaching you the nature of the dunya. There's a Pharaoh and there is a Moses. There will always be Pharaohs. There will always be Moses. This is the nature of the world. But we always look at the Pharaohs and the Moses outside of ourselves. This is where the problem is. Quran is for us. It was revealed for us to read it. To reflect on it. And this is why Mawlana Rumi, when he finished the chapter of, on, on uh, the story of uh, Musa salam, and, and Fir'aun, he realized what Allah is saying. And he told us, Musa or Fir'aun, that has the toast. You are Musa and you are Fir'aun. You can be Moses and you can be Pharaoh. And we are. At some point we are Pharaoh, at some point we are Moses. And there are people who are Pharaoh, and there are people who are Moses, right? Reflection on the Quran, you'll realize how the world works. Allah gives us the example of Yusuf alayhi salam. Surah Yusuf is, on, is a surah that it's, it's uh, similar to the Bible. It's just a story. We give you the best of the stories. You want a story? Let me tell you a story, Allah says. And Allah gives the most beautiful story when the Iranian director made the series on Yusuf alayhi salam, and they said it was the most watched series in the history of, of, of Persian uh, television. They asked him, how did you do it? He said, I didn't do anything. God wrote the script, I just directed it. And it's really like a script, like a movie script when you read Surah Yusuf alayhi salam. But in the Surah Yusuf alayhi salam, you see dysfunctional family. You see in the family, the brothers of Yusuf throw him in the well. And then they sell him for 20 dirham. Right? These are brothers. Allah is trying to show you something. He's trying to show you something. No, expectation plus reality equals disappointment. Expectation plus reality equals disappointment, right? It's his brothers. And this is why one of the Urdu poets said, Khun ke reshto mein agar hote muhabbat, Yusuf na bikta misr ke bazaaro mein. If love was blood relation, then Yusuf wouldn't end up on the streets of Egypt as a slave boy for sale. It's showing you that there's always going to be depression. There's always going to be sadness. There's always going to be oppression. But what's the way out? What's the way out? We were with one of the great shiuch of our time. And my good friend who was from Libya at that time, if you remember, now the problem is the Muslim, we just remember only thing that's on the news. We don't remember things that were happening like a month ago. When the dam broke in Libya and thousands of people lost their lives in their homes, with the flood. And he asked, how are the people of Libya? He said, yeah, they're trying to figure out these engineers. They made a mistake and they're trying to figure out if they can figure this out. Why did the engineers, you know, how did the engineer mess up that this dam broke the water dam? And the sheikh said something amazing. He said, well, we, he told him, this man who was a scholar as well, he told him, you need to go back and teach them aqidah. You need to go back and teach them aqidah. They should let go of the engineers and cling on to Allah. 
They should let go of the engineers and cling on to Allah. These times are times that we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the times that we make tawbah and we turn to Allah. When calamities hits us, we turn to Allah. Anything that happens for the Muslims, it's always there's one way out. Allah has only one way out. Allah closes all of the doors, leave only one door open, the door to him. And if you go to that door, everything will be fine. For as long as we're trying to figure out the engineers, okay, go ahead and figure it out. That's the job of the, the government. That's not our job. That's not our job. We should turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the second thing that he said, he said that you have to have your, your stomach not full. Like try to keep it a little empty. This is one of, it's a great wisdom. People don't understand the wisdom of this. The Prophet wasallam said, your stomach should be one-third food, one-third air, and one-third water. Right? So you give room. And he said, stop before you're full. Stop a few more so before you're full. Modern science, and this research is incredible, that it takes 20 minutes in order for the stomach to send a signal to your brain that you're full. 20 minutes. So if you stop before you're full, 20 minutes later, you really feel good. But if you don't, that's when you feel like, oh my God, I overate. The prophetic, and one of the things that when you look at the history, uh, there's a beautiful story of Saadi Shirazi about a man who, uh, who, uh, who went hungry. He was just, nobody gave him food and he was just testing something. The incredible story, but just for the sake of this part. So he becomes so hungry that after a few days, he didn't have any food. He said he started hearing ilham, this inspiration. So Saadi says, the diwar mehrab ashamad bagush. He said this ilham it was from the mehrab that was in his chest, but it needed emptiness to echo. So he heard the echo of his own truth. We all have it inside, but it's so full, we can't hear it. But if you go in a valley and you shout, your echo will come back to you, right? Your echo because there's emptiness in there. So just not to eat too much. This is a sunnah of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to eat less. And so you're always, and Mawlana Rumi wrote the entire Masnavi was inspired when he was hungry. The moment he ate, he came out of the hall and he couldn't say anything else. The third, he said, to do Qiyam al-Layl and do Tadarra and to do, to weep, to actually cry at night. Get up in the night and pray. The Prophet ﷺ gave us this beautiful, this is like a, a, a formula, a formula. Afshu salam wa at'imu ta'am wa sila al-arham wa sallu bil-layli wa nasu niyam tadkhulu al-jannah bil salam Spread peace. Be peacemaker. Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers. Be peacemaker. Sulhu khair. Peace is better. What does that mean, peace is better? Peace is better than anything else. Peace is better than anything else. You ask the people who live in wars. You ask him, do you want money? No. Do you want wealth? No. What do you want? I want peace. I just want peace. Because you cannot do anything when you're perturbed. So the first thing, spread peace, right? And then feed people. It's a great sunnah. And I know people here at MCC do that. And they feed people. And then, Silat al-Arham. It's very important to keep the, 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 the bond, the, the, the kinship, the relationship that Allah has put. Especially those you had no choice. There are no choice. You don't have a choice picking your uncle. You have no choice. Allah picked it for you. Or your aunt. Or your mom. Or your dad. Or your grandfather. You had no choice. Allah picked that for you. So whatever it is, you have to make sure that you keep those relationships. These are the things that makes the heart. These are the remedy for your heart. These are the remedy for your, for your heart. When you do this action, your heart feels at ease and at peace. And there's a healing for it. So relation. And then he said, uh, pray in the night when people are asleep. That prayer is different than this prayer. This prayer, everybody sees you. This is an amazing prayer. Juma, we all put on our best clothes. We come here and everybody sees us. MashaAllah, it's great. It's an amazing day. But at night when you get up, right? So one of the things that Sheikh uh, Ibrahim al-Yaqubi, uh, Rahimu Allah, the father of the great Sheikh Muhammad al-Yaqubi said, he said that 
It's amazing how people get up and pray in their pajamas. But if you ask them, because there was a man that came to the masjid in Damascus after Fajr, for Fajr prayer, and he was in his night clothes, you know, just like the Arabic pajamas, which is very decent, Arabic pajamas compared to the Americans, obviously. And then after that, the sheikh said, we're going to go visit uh, a sick person in our community. Let's go visit the sunnah. So they all said, okay, and this man said, no, can you, Sheikh, can you wait like five minutes? They said, why? So let me go change. We're going to go to this man's house. And he said, you come to the house of God, and you stand in front of him, and you're not embarrassed from this quote. But yet, you don't want to go to so-and-so's house because you're embarrassed of this quote. So even for that, at night, if you pray, put on something. I always tell people, have a, like I have a, you know, you have a fajr, a jubba. You just slip it on over your clothes. So you're actually standing in front of Allah. If, so the night prayer is very important. The reason why it's important because Allah has put all of these, the blessings, spiritual blessing in the night. This, you want wealth, you get up in the morning early. That's the thing. You want wealth? So there's three types of sleep. Ailula, Ailula, wa Hailula. According to our tradition, there's more, but these are the three that our Prophet ﷺ told us about. One is after, Ailul is after Fajr. That sleep, the Prophet ﷺ said it would bring poverty. If you look at all of the rich people, every you just do research, and I did that of the top like 50 people who are the richest people on the planet. They all get up like 4 a.m., go to the gym. Before sunrise, they're at work. They don't sleep in the morning. That early hours of the morning, right? And they work, and they gain. Allah gives the dunya. It's a formula. You get up early in the morning, but if you sleep, that it doesn't make it doesn't. It's not haram, but it's just the wealth of the dunya is in those hours. So get up early in the morning if you want to be rich, and then don't sleep after that. Work hard, right? Then qailula is after uh, before dohr at that noon time to do a nap. That's the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said it's sunnah. It is good for your health. It's actually very healthy. Stanford did a research many years ago that if you want to live a healthy life, take a nap in the early afternoon, and I think, uh, and then it will be, uh, you will have a healthy life. And I think the Spanish siesta, the Spanish, they have this afternoon nap. It must have came from the Muslim who, when they conquered uh, Spain for 800 years, that they got that, that, that habit. But, and then you have uh, Hailula, which is uh, after, they say it's Asr time. And that's not good for your health. And we know now with the, with the, with the trees, how they release the energy in the evening. And, and, and it's not good to be under a tree, obviously, at night. So all of these uh, beautiful things. But the night is a place, the night is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you want success in the akhirah, you get up at night and you pray. And those, you know, the people, they say they didn't have a moment in their life. <clears throat> If you shed one tear in the middle of the night, don't let anyone purchase that from you. Because that's worth more than the dunya in paradise. One, one tear. One shed. If you tear at night and you get up and there's nobody there, because that is a sincere tear for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's nidama. That's regret. That's the moment that you're breaking down. And when you break down, the light enters you. And don't sell that moment. Don't trade that for anything. One of the great poets said, he said, don't sell that teardrop that you shed in the early hours of dawn for the Pleiades, for the stars. Because it's priceless. That tear is priceless. So get up at night and pray. Because those are the moments that you find yourself. And you find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In those quietude moments that, that nobody's there. You're not trying to impress anyone. You're not trying. Everything is for Allah. This is the moment that you are who you are. In the, in the last thing he said, he said you have to um, keep the company of the people of righteousness. Good people. That is also brings, a, it's like a healing medicine for your heart. There are people that you sell, they're toxic. There are people that are toxic. You sit with them, you feel toxic. All they talk about is the dunya, backbite about people, and negative. And those are the things, those are, there's homes that are toxic. There are homes that are toxic. You go to somebody's home, you feel agitated. You want to leave that home. Because this is a house that always they're backbiting and they're doing things that are antithetical to our religion. 
But there are places where you go, you feel at home. You just want to spend time with people. You just want to. I met a man about seven, seven months ago. I just met him. I didn't even know his name, nothing. He just walked in to my work. And I didn't know who, I didn't even know if he was, what language he spoke. He came and said, Salaam alaikum. I just went and sat next to him. And then we started talking. And he, he's the closest person right now. And I, get, I have to see him every week because he is just a good person. He's a beautiful man. And it gives you that energy that is positive in tranquility. I swear my heart feels at ease when I see him. And it's like a medicine for a whole week. Just a moment with this uh, person. He's a beautiful man. He's one of the immigrants from Afghanistan that, was, that, was, that, was, that left his hometown and came. So these are the things that they teach us. And Hawass was one of the amazing people. He has mastered the spirituality and give us these advices. And the reason why these work, because they have tested it. These people would never give you advice unless they tested it and know that these things work. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Mursaleen, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een, bi rahmatiki ya alhamur rahimeen. The gift of the heart is incredible, and the gift of the night is incredible. Uh, most people, they don't know the power of night. And this is why even in the Western culture, when they want to leave God, leave religion, what do they do? They stand up and dance all night. They don't do it in the daytime. They do it at nighttime. Because there is a power in the night. There was a man, and there's a true story, whether you want to believe it or not, it's up to you. He said he, he dressed up, he took a shower, dressed up at night, and he was going to a, a concert club party. And he went. Anyways, he went in a club party and it was very crowded, too crowded, the dance floor. So he left the dance floor and then he went in this, this place, he said they had like two, three stories. And he was from the second story, he was looking at the dance floor. And sometimes it's, you, players and coaches are different. The coach sees the bird's eye view, the player sees the bee's eye view. It's different. So he said, I looked at him. And all of a sudden, he said, the music just disappeared. I couldn't hear the music anymore. Like, literally just faded. And I saw all these people dancing, and they looked very ridiculous. Without, And he said, I heard something. He said, I heard. And this is when there's fitra, there's purity in you. He said, I heard something that said, this is not why we created you. We didn't create you for this to dance like monkeys all night. You should pray. And he said to himself, he said, I said to myself, pray? Why would I pray? This is called dilemma. Everybody will go through this. Where you come across, how you solve this problem. And he said, I said to myself, you're stupid. You're asking me to pray in a club, right? I came here for, for different reason. Why would I want to pray? And he said, myself told me, because you have wudu. You just came out of shower. You're pure. You still can pray. Pray your Isha. And I said, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. Nobody prays Isha at this time. If you, hear, if you hear that story, like you would weep. And he said, at this time when I was like literally confused, something inside of me pushed me to the corner and I found a spot and I went and started praying. He said, the moment I said, Allahu Akbar, he's a Muslim guy, obviously. And he said, everything disappeared. And he did his prayer and he left. He said, I left that and I never went back. Right? Years later. He said, I never went back. But everybody would get a calling. Those doors are open because the night, uh, Khaj Abdullah Ansari, the great commentator of the Quran and the spiritual master, he says 
شب خیز که عاشقان و شب راز کنند he said get up at night because the night is the time that lovers communicate lovers they only do it at night they communicate at night they do raz you know what raz is when you tell your mysteries and your secrets that you can't tell anybody you can't tell anybody those are the time that changes people those moments in the night that changes people and that bring the heart to life that heals those heart if you don't do it then the heart will get agitated then you will behave in a way that you'll regret right you will behave in a way with your family with your friends with your loved ones with your community with your society with your teachers with your children that you would regret because you didn't put the right ointment of healing on your heart and your and your pain and your suffering will make other people suffer so no matter what happens we all would have solution We all will have solution to to uh, to the mysteries of the hearts, to anything that happens to us. So may Allah give us tawfiq and make us amongst the people that we put the ointment of healing on our hearts, inshallah, and become amongst the people that on the day of judgment, Allah is pleased with us, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is proud of us on that day when he sees us and we stand in front of him with qalbin salim, inshallah, with hearts that are pure. إن شاء الله وتعالى إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مدل له من يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتون إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في قرآن مجيد إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وصلوا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين برحمتك يا رحم الرحمين وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أرحم أمتي بأمتي أبي بكر وأشدهم في أمر الله عمر وأستغهم حيان عثمان وأقضاهم عليا وفاتم سيدة النساء أهل الجنة وحمزة أسد الله وأسد الرسول خير القرون قرن ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلونهم إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينحى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبقي يذكركم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا لي أذكركم واذكروا لي ولا تشكرون وذكروا الله أكبر وأقيموا الصلاة